Okay, everyone. So we're going to look today at um, the types of reactions that hydrocarbons can undergo. And actually, the focus of this, this lesson itself is actually looking at only uh, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So we're, um, we'll talk a little bit about benzene as well, like aromatics. But um, each type of functional group that we're going to learn in the future has their own set of reactions that they can undergo. Okay, so today's going to be kind of just introducing you to the types of reactions. And then as we go through and learn the different functional groups, there'll be more and more um, that we'll learn as we kind of go a little bit at a time. Okay, so just to review, an alkene, right, when we refer to an alkene is where we have a hydrocarbon that has only single bonds in the carbon groups. So you have, for example, propane or methane or octane. You have a certain number of carbons and it is saturated. It is completely filled with um, hydrogens with single covalent bonds. Okay, so alkene reactions. So if you remember, um, when we looked at the functional group um, introduction, when you have a single covalent bond, it's essentially an overlapping of orbitals, right? We have those sigma bonds that we saw in unit one. So sigma bonds are relatively stable. So they're, uh, they take a little bit more energy in order to break apart. So this makes alkenes actually relatively unreactive. So uh, they still can react, of course, but it's not a variety of different reactions, really. You're limited to either undergoing combustion reactions, and we're always assuming them to be complete combustion, and substitution reactions, and we're going to look at each one of these. So first of all, alkane combustion. So it should go actually without saying that when we say combustion reactions, any hydrocarbon can really undergo this type of reaction. So it doesn't matter if it is a benzene ring, if it is an alkene, if it is uh, an alcohol, as long as if the molecule is composed of uh, carbon, hydrogen, and sometimes oxygen atoms, and it doesn't matter how many you have of them, they are able to undergo complete combustion. Okay, so what we mean when we say combustion, of course, we mean that that hydrocarbon or that organic molecule is reacting with oxygen gas. So it is always assumed that we are undergoing complete combustion. So what does that mean when we say something is completely combusting? So first of all, that means that there is a sufficient amount of oxygen to ensure that all of the hydrocarbon is reacted. So there's no excess reagents that are left behind, uh, right? We're not dealing with limiting reactants. Well, actually, we want the hydrocarbon to be limiting because we want all of it to react. So the products are always the same, okay? So you will always have water in its gaseous form and carbon dioxide, okay? So um, when you're looking at this and you are thinking about whether or not it is going to have combustion, you always understand that it is complete. So it doesn't matter what it is, even if it's methane with oxygen, your two products are always, without a doubt, water and carbon dioxide. And make sure that water is a gas. In this case, actually, everything's a gas. So um, as we mentioned, all hydrocarbons undergo this manner. And also, any hydrocarbon molecule that has oxygen, like I mentioned, as long as if it is composed of only carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, you are able to have a complete combustion. Now, all combustion reactions are highly exothermic. So this term, if you don't recall what this means, this means that there is an energy release in the reaction process. So um, in this case, of course, there is lots of heat that is usually released and typically also in the form of light. So there is energy release. So for example, the propane gas that maybe your barbecue runs on is an, is an example of a, an alkene that is doing combustion. So here's our propane. So propane plus oxygen will make carbon dioxide and, I'm not sure why the state of water is not there, but also water. 
And of course, always remember you have to balance this chemical reaction. And actually, you'll see going forward that all organic reactions are already going to be balanced for you. Really, combustion is the only one you have to consciously make the effort to remember to balance. And you'll see what I mean once we learn and we go through all of the other ones. So, oh, I've already given you the methane one. Let's do something else. So instead of methane, and we're just going to ignore that, here's our methane. Let's do another one. So what I want you to do is show the complete balanced reaction for, uh, let's do, benz, uh, no, let's do uh, butane. So we want to see butane and we want to have butane do uh, complete combustion, right? So in the future, just so you know, I won't always be saying complete combustion. I'm just going to be saying combustion. It is assumed to be complete. So pause the video and give this a try. Oh, and if you didn't know, butane is a liquid. This is what's found in lighter fluid. So that will help you when you're doing your reaction. Okay, so you should have C4H10 plus O2 gas making CO2 plus H2O gas gas. So for balancing, right, put a four carbon, then we'll have a five for our hydrogen. Our carbon number, we're going to have eight plus five, which is 13. So we can actually leave this as 13 over two, or if you prefer to have whole numbers, you would basically double up on all of your coefficients. So this would become a two, this will be 13, eight, and 10. Okay, now typically, um, I know in grade 11, when you're balancing, it's kind of frowned upon to keep the fractions. Um, I will tell you that the fractions are acceptable here at this uh, point in time. And that's mainly because uh, you'll see once we get into the later units, we actually will be coming across reactions that have fractions in them. So it's kind of nice to get comfortable with seeing them. Um, but, of course, it's still acceptable to do it with the whole numbers uh, 100%. Okay, so let's talk about the other types of reactions. So that was combustion. So then we have substitution reactions. So substitution kind of is what it sounds like. So when you substitute something, that means you're swapping something for something else. So think of like Let's say on the soccer field, you know, there's a team playing and you're going to substitute, you have a, a sub person who's going to swap in for another player. Um, so it's the same thing. So we're going to swap one atom for another. So what happens here is actually a halogen is going to swap places with a hydrogen that is in your structure. So one of your reactants is going to be an alkane. And another reactant is going to be a halogen, so one of the halogens. Now, typically, as I mentioned, uh, alkenes are pretty unreactive. So in order for this to happen, typically it needs uh, a little bit of a boost of energy. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I sneezed. <laughs> so it needs a little bit. Of, how's that for realness? <laughs> so... Uh, typically, these types of reactions are either warmed up, so heat is added, or uh, UV light is, is added to the reaction. So, um, as we mentioned, you do need some energy. Sometimes, I do not expect you to know uh, what the catalysts are or what the different additions are for every reaction. You should just simply know how the reaction mechanism works and be able to write them out. Um, but I'm not going to ask you to know, to know, like literally we're going to be learning tons of reactions. Each one could have a different requirement. Um, but I just want you to kind of be aware that you do know that alkanes are pretty unreactive and you do need a boost of energy to do this type of swapping. So here's an example. So we have methane and we are adding a, chlor a chlorine molecule basically. So what's happening is one of the hydrogens on that methane is being swapped out for a chlorine. So you'll notice on the product side, we have a chloromethane, so basically methane with a chlorine on it. So if you remember when we were looking at um, uh, 
um, halogens that are on uh, different groups, they're basically named as a branch, right? So you have a chloro. Jeez. So you have chloro, uh, we have fluoro, we have bromo, and we have uh, iodo. Okay, so here we have uh, chlorine and hydrogen are swapping. Now, when you're doing this, it does not matter which hydrogen you take. All that matters is one of those hydrogens swaps for one of those chlorine. So the chlorine that remains behind essentially is with the hydrogen that has left our alkane. And then we have now HCl or H whatever the halogen is. And then the halogen is now on our um, alkane. So we sometimes refer to this as a halogenated alkane uh, or an alkyl halide. You'll see it go by a few different things. Uh, but essentially, we have a, um, an alkene that has a halogen on it. And that halogen is actually now considered to be a functional group. So before we get into this, uh, actually, we'll go through the alkene substitution, and then um, I'll have you try some out. Okay, so we have uh, the same thing. Aromatics, like benzene rings, actually behave exactly the same as uh, an alkene does. So even though there are alternating double bonds in that benzene, the benzene structure itself is actually relatively stable because of the delocalization of those electrons. So even though they're alternating double bonds and double bonds are easier to break than single covalent bonds, you still have a pretty stable structure because of the proximity of those pi bonds. So essentially it's kind of like you have um, all of these pi bonds working together. If you remember from the last video, that's why we kind of show that circle in the middle to represent that delocalization. So anyways, um, so benzenes basically behave the same as uh, alkenes. So they can do combustion reactions and they can also do substitution reactions. So you have to remember that when you're drawing these carbon skeletons, um, there's technically um, hydrogens that are filling in those bonds. So even though they're not drawn in, there is a hydrogen on each point of this benzene. So what can happen is, is when you add in a halogen, one of the hydrogens, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, one of the hydrogens will be replaced with one of the halogens. So in this case, and again, remember, I don't expect you to know what the catalysts are for the reaction. Um, but, you know, if you see that there, that's fine. It's just so you know what that means. Uh, so the chlorine and hydrogen will swap places. Okay, so before we get into this, I'm going to have you try some out. So let's say we have... Um, propane plus... Let's do uh, iodine, and then we want to have um, okay. So pause the video and give these a try. Okay, so for the first one, right, we have a bunch of hydrogens we can choose from. It does not matter which one you take. So we're going to have uh, HI as a product, and we're going to swap out one of them. It, again, it doesn't matter. So sure, I'll put one over here. Okay, so if we wanted to do several of these swaps, what you would have to do is actually indicate that there is more than one iodine. So for every iodine that's here, you are swapping out only one hydrogen. So let's say there was two I2s. What that means is you would have two swappings. So you'd have two HIs and you would swap out another hydrogen. So be careful sometimes when you're doing this reaction, you may be doing it more than one time. So it kind of depends. So if it's just one, then you're just swapping out one only. So here we have a cyclo, we'll continue this in the next part. 